Hi, today I'm going to check out the signal chain of Ace Frehley, Paul Stanley and, and Eddie Kramer, who was the uh, engineer and producer uh, of the KISS album Alive from 1975. We're going to start out by uh, listening to uh, my latest attempt. Uh, I've done many previous attempts here on the channel to, to uh, sound like this, but I, I think I've come the closest this time. So we're going to listen to that and then we're going to go through uh, all steps you can see in this picture. This is a typical signal chain of, of, uh, of electric guitar. And I'm, I'm going to go through what has been suggested for Ace uh, and also Paul, but mostly Ace, uh, in, in all these boxes. I'm not going to speculate that much. I'm just going to go through what has been suggested. And then I'm going to do some experiments so you, you can see what, what is the most likely answer. So let's listen to my latest attempt first. <laughs> So, so here, I, here I applied, to my best knowledge, all, all these boxes here in, in a certain way. Uh, we're going to have a look at that uh, later. First, first, let's go, go through everything that has been suggested. So when it comes to the guitar, Ace, Ace used the 1973 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe that had, prior to he bought it, it was rooted for humbuckers instead. Uh, and when he got it, uh, the, there were T-tops in it. Uh, but in, by the time of the release of Alive uh, and recording of Alive, he, he had um, he had the super distortions most likely in it, Di Marzio. It could have been uh, could have been a prototype of the super distortion also, but, but more 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 likely a, a basically standard super distortion. Um, then it, since since uh, since Ace um, um, Ace guitar was routed. You know, not, not professionally in the factory, but, but by the previous owner. The pickup was closer to the bridge, you know, like an SG, uh, which, which influences the sound, so, so it's brighter. But if you look at uh, Aces Tobacco uh, Les Paul, you can see that uh, it varies. So, so it's probably, probably a big cavity where, where, where the pickup can move. So he, he may have had it closer, like an SG, or he may have had it further from the bridge, like a, like a Les Paul. Uh, Paul, Paul most likely used his, uh, his black uh, Gibson uh, Firebird 1 here uh, on, on, on this album. Uh, when it comes to pedals, uh, not sure if, if he used the pedal or not, but, but uh, uh, my, my previous uh, uh, experiments with the Electro Harmonics LPB1 has been successful. So we're going to have some experiments with that later in this video too to see. How big part of the sound is that? Uh, he, he probably uses big muff for solos and so on. I don't know if, if he did that on this album, but he has done that on, on uh, other albums. Um, when it comes to amp, uh, it, it's documented that Gene Simmons bought a couple of uh, uh, Super Lille full stacks uh, from 1973. And it can be seen in pictures and so on that they are from 1973 and not from 72, since, since they have those plastic corners. At, at least some of them. Um, and so, so most likely greenbacks in, in, those, in those cabs. Then, then it has been suggested that Ace and Paul used uh, other amps than, than Superlead also. Uh, for instance, you may have seen a picture of Ace uh, in his studio in Connecticut. Um, where, where he, uh, you can see all guitars lined up, and there, there you have an, uh, a tweed Fender Harward, and you have a blackface Fender Princeton, for instance. And, and in the other pictures, you can see uh, Ace, where, where he tunes the guitar before uh, live gigs. There, there is a 112 
base master Fender Silverface that he's using. Maybe use that one too. Maybe put maybe put uh, greenbacks in those. So th that's uh, we're going to make some uh, experiments later here too. Uh, and and uh, I, I did a video earlier here of a Silverface Vibrolux compared to a Super Lead. If you play it through a four by twelve, sounds basically identical. So so that's very hard to tell with, whether whether what the amp was, but most likely the super lead because they, they at this point they hadn't really made it yet, so, so they didn't have the money to be elaborate. So they, they pro probably just used the default stuff here, which would have been a super lead. Uh, and by the way, they, they had 6550 not il 34 tubes in it and, and a 4 by 12 So that, that would have been the simplest thing to do and, and most likely. Um, when it comes to, uh, to the speakers uh, in the cabs, uh, they, they most, or we can, we can have the cabs first here because it's more interesting. Most, most likely they, they use 1960B cabs. Um, it's, it's easier to record than the A cab, which is the slanted one. Uh, and most likely it was 1960, not 1982, at least, at least to my ears. 1982 is, uh, at least for Ace, may, maybe Paul used 1982. Uh, 1960 more kind of rock and roll like. And 1982 is more hard rock uh, to me, to me at least. Uh, so and then the cab could be any of the cabs from those other amps, like like the Bass Master or or the Harvard or Princeton and so on. Um, but probably not the Harvard or Princeton cab because it, it this really sounds like 12 inch speakers. Um, then then the speakers themselves, uh, we most likely that it, it was the T1221 greenbacks and, and not the blackbacks. I'm going to show you in a test test uh, in a second here why, why, I, why I think so. Uh, I've also suggested the Jensen earlier because they sound pretty similar. But uh, I, I don't think they had, since they had really hadn't made it yet, they, 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 they probably, you know, was cost efficient and played it safe. Then before we make the, uh, the experiment here, uh, let, let's also discuss mic uh, type and mic positioning. Uh, I, I've heard a, a number of uh, uh, isolated tracks. One is from the song Deuce, from, from uh, I think the tour uh, prior to uh, Live, the Dress to Kill tour. And, and one, uh, one isolated track for, from, for the, the song uh, Parasite. Uh, and, and they also are done live, and, and they to me sound identically, identical to, uh, to what it sounds on a live. So, so they most likely use the dynamic mic close to the amp since it's recorded live. Uh, so so they prob the probably haven't done the, the uh, like David Gilmour did in, in the studio. You know, he had a, one, one mic that picks up all four speakers. You have to back off then. Uh, but then you, get, you get, let lo get lots of bleed. So they probably used close miking. Then when it comes to the mic, it's most likely a dynamic mic like SM57 or 4, 421. But some, some uh, mics like the uh, AKG C414 can, can actually be put uh, all, all the way, uh, you know, close to the grill and, and take the, uh, the abuse from, uh, from, uh, from the amp. Uh, so I don't know, I don't think that matters that much. Then, then you, you know, when you record, the, the mic hits a uh, preamp and, and then a compressor before you go down to tape, in their case, and in my case, to, to a Cubase Digital. Uh, and, and the compressor is quite, quite significant for, for the Sonic signature. I know that uh, uh, Eddie Kramer for, for Rock and Roll Over, uh, he, he used uh, Uray 1176 compressors. I'm using that here today as well. Uh, but what he used for a live and, and what the, uh, the guys that recorded the live sound uh, used, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to use an 1160, 1176 today. Then you have EQ. I think he, for the rock and roll over um, uh, sessions, Eddie Kramer used Pultec EQs. I'm just going to use the Cubase, Cubase EQ here. And then, of course, in, you know, uh, you, you can, uh, at, at this stage, you, you can have... You can kind of push, since, since, since uh, back in the day, you, you go through a master compressor and then down to tape again. You, uh, then you can push it once more to, to, to make it fatter and to, and to, uh, to remove some of the har harshness. 
Uh, and, and I can't do that, of course. Uh, so that's basically, uh, that's basically my, my knowledge of the different alternatives. So now, now let's have a look at what I have done. I, I have, uh, instead of the uh, ACES uh, 1973, the Deluxe, I have a 1973 Custom instead. I'm using a, 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 a Super Distortion in it from 1977, uh, and it's standard placement. I also have an uh, Electroharmonics LPB-1 here. I'm going to use a 1976 Super Lead with EL34 rather than the 73 Super Lead with 6550 that Ace used. Then I'm using a 1972-1960 B cab, which would be very similar to what he may have used and Paul may have used. Uh, I'm going to use a uh, uh, 2247 Peluso tube mic uh, close to the grill. I'm going to route that through an API. Uh, 512C, and I'm going to take the 512C through a 1973 1176 revision F uh, uh, compressor, and then down to Cubase. Then in Cubase, I am uh, I'm uh, using EQ matching, and the EQ matching here is is done by I'm looking at the uh, the uh, isolated tracks of the song Juice from Cobo Hall, I think. They, they uh, or, or is it Wildwood? Oh, some, some, some of those uh, uh, performances, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm measuring the, IQ, the EQ, uh, the frequency distribution from uh, the last chorus before the solo, and then the solo, and then I take that uh, and compare it to when I play Firehouse here, and then I, then I, I, I calculate the difference, and then I apply that that uh, EQ compensation on when I play, play Firehouse and, and Mr. Speed here. And I think that, that, sounds, that sounds just like a live harsher, but, uh, but um, uh, the, same, the same type. That, that harshness would have disappeared if you, if, if you would have the, the rest of their signal chain, you know, with tape and, and with going through lots of transformers and tubes and, and, and new... Uh, you know, you can, you can push tape a whole lot more than you can push uh, digital. Uh, but now let, let's let's see what we can do to uh, to um, w w which of these things can we uh, investigate now? How important is the uh, LPB one booster? We're going to investigate. It. Was it one twelve or was it four twelve? And we're going to investigate: is it um, blackbacks or is it greenbacks? Uh, and we're going to investigate how important was the EQ compensation uh, at the end, you know, what Eddie, Eddie added on, on the desk afterwards. So let's do that now. <laughs>
right, so I'm going to make an exception uh, and actually draw some conclusions myself today. Uh, I, I thought I thought the four by twelve sounded much more like uh, the 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 tone on a live, because uh, you know it it makes the sound more scooped and more nasal, bigger sounding. Uh, so the one twelve wasn't wasn't anywhere near it. I think it sounds like the sound on King of the Nighttime World. Uh, that, that sounds like one one by twelve. But that's probably also just a four by twelve, but EQ'd like that. Uh, then, then I, th I thought the greenbacks sounded much more like uh, like the uh, album than than the blackbacks, because uh, uh, the, the the greenbacks are more nasal and it is really a nasal tone, and and the more syn synthetic sounding the blackbacks uh, works great for for more gain and, and hard rock, uh, but this kind of rock and roll now then then it is greenbacks to me. Uh, then, when it comes to the booster, it really added some oomph and in intensity to the sound. But I mean, it, it, they, it was similar with, with the other setup, but really needed it to, to, to have this aggressive sense, you know, that, you know, that attack the, an oomph that, that Ace has and Paul has in, in their, their tones. And then finally, the uh, EQ uh, is really important. Uh, this, this is not anything that you could. Uh, could get from the amp. Now, now Ace had all knobs on five. I, I did too here. Uh, but even if you uh, you you dial it up uh, fully, it, it's nowhere near this this type of, of treble. So so I, I'm almost positive it, it must have come from the desk from Eddie. Uh, so Eddie basically came up with with this this tone, and you know that Gene Simmons. I think Gene Simmons was Eddie Van Halen's manager, or or he, he kind of. He, he he helped them make it in the beginning. So 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 they they uh, they collaborated with Ed, Eddie, who, who took this tone further. You know, a really bright tone. Uh, and, and in Eddie's case, it you know it was uh, he, he used JBLs also. Uh, so 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 maybe he tried to recreate this this tone that Eddie did with Kiss in the studio using EQ. He, he recreated that in the room with 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 the help of this. Brighter speakers, uh, kind of interesting. And then you know, next next generation Slash and Guns N' Roses, they, they actually were in contact with Paul Stanley, so they may have been influenced by this this too. Uh, it, it it wasn't uh, Paul who who ended up producing the album, but he, he was approached in in the beginning, uh, as far as I understood it. They they. Uh, what they used, if they used at this initial EQ here, uh, you know the EQ compensation, or if, or if if they used uh, JBLs, or if they used these Sir Studios amps, well, well, the what is said is that they used the Sir Studios amps, uh, I, I, and I, I and I really think they did. But it's an interesting thing. It's three ways to to achieve the same type of tone. Now, now the, these tones are different in terms of that at this. And Ace's tone they don't have the same quick attack as, as Slash's tone, uh, but but uh, nonetheless, I, I think this is I think this is the first first implementation of this extremely bright tone. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, uh, the the uh, full uh, tracks on on the Alive album, of course, th there's lots of bleed, which you can hear in the isolation tracks from from the other instruments. So, so the, this guitar will bleed into the drum mic, so that's why it doesn't sound this close on the album. And maybe they even had room mics also, uh, or, or stadium mics. Uh, but uh, th this is what the close mics sound like, uh, at any rate. Um, another really interesting thing is, um, is that... Um, uh, you, you know, the, I, I used this, the EQ from the Deuce track, on the live, or, or this was Wildwood, but th their Ace's tone is really bright. But on the rest of the album, it's not as bright. For, for instance, on there's an isolation track of 100,000 years, it's much, much darker. And Firehouse uh, was darker uh, also on, on, the, on the album uh, than the Deuce, Juice, or how it's pronounced. Uh, so the interesting thing is that on Alive 2, though, there it seems like Eddie used this EQ on all, all the guitars, because that one sounds bright throughout. 
so, so much of the richness from the live album comes from, uh, you know, they, they probably had to reuse lots of, of uh, uh, see my crappy recordings from, from, uh, from, from the desk, from live situations. And they had to kind of uh, paste it together to, for this album. Uh, and and uh, whereas that is, is an, uh, you know, not a pleasant situation for the engineer who has to do that work, in the final end, it, it, it gives for a, for a more uh, rich and, and uh, organic, you know, uh, it, 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 uh, it becomes more interesting, although many of the sounds aren't as good. Um, that's why I like Alive 1 better than Alive 2. One other uh, reflection here that, that is kind of interesting is that uh, uh, I think it's sympathetic that, that, that the, these isolation tracks are, 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 are allowed to stay up uh, online by, 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 uh, by KISS. Because that, that is, this is a huge contribution, uh, you know, the relationship between the frequencies, between lead, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, bass and drums and vocals. That, that is a huge... Usually, usually, usually people suppress that and try to package it in, into some product that they can sell instead. You know, to sell some, to say that oh, you get you get this really bright sound by buying this distortion box or this speaker or whatever, when, when they know it's, it it was actually done like this with the desk. So it, it, this is sympathetic. They, they they have made it possible for fans like me and others to to recreate this, and now this is available to anyone. So so hats off to to Kiss. All right, now I want to hear your uh, your uh, um, reflections and and uh, ideas and uh, any critique you might have for this as well. Thanks. <laughs>